This is the... of two short stories by one of America's most celebrated literary figures, Catherine Ann Porter. Last season, it was our pleasure to present Miss Porter's short story, Noon Wine, in dramatic form. And this broadcast was instrumental in winning for the NBC Theater the Peabody Award for Radio Drama. Today, we are proud to present Pale Horse, Pale Rider, and Flowering Judas, as prepared for radio by Clarice A. Ross of NBC. And at intermission, a transcribed commentary on the works of Catherine Ann Porter by Erwin Edmond, author and professor of philosophy at Columbia University. Here, then, our first offering, Flowering Judas. He is waiting, senorita. Again? See. Si. I tell him you are out and I do not know when you will return, but he is waiting. He is waiting since two hours. All right, Luca, thank you. Go to bed now. Si, senorita. You are late in arriving, my little Laura. I was detained. So? It cannot be that you are avoiding me? No one avoids you, Bragioni. <laughs> of course not. I make a joke. Come, sit down. Your rice and your chocolate, they have been waiting as long as I. Have some with me. I have eaten. And the chocolate thickens the voice for singing. Have you a new song for me this evening? Oh, so beautiful a song. A most beautiful song for a most beautiful gringita. <laughs> Do you know what this song would say to you, beautiful Laura? It would tell you of myself That I have no father, no mother No, not a friend to comfort me I am lonely as a wave of the sea Lonely as a wave of the sea you have one or two things to comfort your loneliness, I think, Bragioni. Oh, yes, my Laura. I am rich, I am rich. Not in money, but rich in power. <laughs> you admire this diamond, huh? Eh? Mm. But with power comes the right to a few small luxuries. Look, a handkerchief, real silk. And uh, smell the perfume. I have it imported from New York. What happiness. Ah, you laugh at me. I am wounded by life. Everything, everything turns to dust in the hand, to gall on the tongue. And you, my poor Laura. Yes? Tell me about me. Poor thing. You too will be disappointed. You are born for it. Wait and see. Ah, you are so much like me. So much like me. I am tempted to forgive you for being a gringa. <laughs> a gringita. <laughs> slap him, Laura. Why don't you slap him? One good slap would wipe that suety smile from his greasy face and shut up his miserable singing. You don't dare. He's too cruel. You haven't the courage. Nobody would have the courage. Why don't you run? Run down the stairs and into the street and leave him here alone singing to himself. Run? Run where? You're promised to this country. You promised yourself, uninvited. You have nothing to go back to. And what do you have here? Good morning, children. I want to thank whoever brought these lovely flowers. No, it was me. Me. I show you. Quiet, children. Children, be quiet now. Juan, Juan, take your seat. Now, it doesn't matter. I thank both of you. All right, come now. The lesson. Everyone repeat, please. 
The cat is on the mat. The cat is on the mat. The dog is at the door. The dog is at the door. The rope is on the table. The rope is on the table. Soft little round heads. Soft little clay-colored faces. They're all strangers. The little ones and the big ones. They'll always be strangers. Tell me, my Laura, what did you do today? Oh, there was a letter for Pedro. I took it to him. He is still hiding? Hiding? I knew where he was and I could hardly find him. He talks as though all Mexico were his... He and the others may be careful. It is very restful to have them out of the way for a while. Oh, it would break their hearts if they heard you. They don't talk that way of you. Ah, their hearts. I do not care about their hearts. And do not you care, my gringita. What does Bragioni say, Laura? I am sick of sitting in this mildewed house with the windows darkened. He says nothing. You are still to wait here, Pedro. Very good. I wait then. What Bragioni says, I do. I know I am always in his heart. No one is in his heart but himself. But that is not so. He's a true leader of men. A true revolutionist. <laughs> he has a great love for all men. How can he be a true revolutionist? He is... Fat. He eats too much and drinks too much and sings too much. He eats for his strength. To be a leader, one must be strong. Then you should eat more, Pedro. Then you might be the leader. <laughs> you talk nonsense. Go now. The street will be empty. And bring me word soon from our leader. Rajoni so loves himself, he convinces others that he loves them. And you, Laura? The excess of that self-love has settled on you. It gives you your good job, your salary. But you know what he wants of you. You know the slow, fat, greasy drift of his intentions. Only sit quietly with your open book on your lap and be ready to say no. No to everything. Have you brought anything to eat, little Laura? The food in this prison will not stay in a man's stomach. Oh, you look ill, Francisco. Ah, there is nothing the matter with me that would not be cured if I could see those filthy ones of the government here in this cell where I am. You're still working on the manifesto? Yes. Oh, good, Francisco. You must finish it soon. Ah, yes, if the cursed precision air and food do not finish me first. When are they going to get us out? Patience, Francisco. It takes money and influence. Where are we going to find them? Well, what of Bragioni? Won't he do something soon? You will wait for Bragioni, Francisco, till you are dead. You shut up with that talk, Eugenio. You see, Laura, Eugenio has no more patience either. I'll speak to him. Come soon again, little Lord. Yes, Francisco. Welcome to the jailhouse, Gringita. Don't call me that, Eugenio. You don't like no. it? No. It's Bragioni's name for you. You should come here more often, little Laura. I come as often as I can, Eugenio. Oh, I know. You, you are busy. You make yourself so busy with our poor little revolution. But it has nothing to do with you. What are you doing in Mexico, Laura? I... I have nothing else. Is this something? It is a faith. It is a faith if you have it. But meanwhile, I have seen you in Tehuantepec, kneeling on the stone floor of the church. Yeah. Oh, don't worry. I won't tell anyone. I won't make a scandal. Have you brought me what you promised, little Laura? Oh, it is bad for you. Bad for me? It is bad for me to rot in a cell where I don't know whether it's night or day or when it's time to sleep. All right, all right, I've brought it. How much? Three tablets. It is not enough. Next time bring more. 
I die of boredom in here. You were to draw the plans for the next raid. Plans? Let poor Johnny make his own plans. Let him make them into a song and bellow them to the world with his fat voice. A man in prison has no plans. Do you know, Gringita, that you are very foolish? Why? You are so beautiful, but you do not give your beauty a chance. Your hair pulled back so stiff and plain. And those beautiful legs, all hidden with that long, heavy skirt. Oh, it is wrong, it is wrong. It is right for me. Oh, you think you are so cold, Gringita. Wait and see. You will surprise yourself someday. May I be there to advise you? I don't need your advice. Wait and see. Ah, when I was young. (laughs) I was a poet then. I was thin. Thin and so handsome. And the women, how they loved me. I threw away my youth with too much love. But you throw yours away with none? Oh, my heart is full of you. But there is time. There's all the time in the world. Only sit still, Laura. Sit still. And when the time comes, be ready to say no. Deny everything. It is your talisman. It will not suffer you to be led into evil. It will protect you. Lupe? Lupe? Si, senorita. Who is that young man? He's been standing out there in the patio singing for two hours. It means that he is a lost soul. He has lost his heart and his soul to you, senorita. But who is he? No one. He is a union organizer. And before that, he sold corridos in the Merced Market. And before that, he came from Guanajuato, where I was born. What does he want of me? His song, it begs for your love. He begs you to look into his eyes and to see his heart there. I can't see his eyes. He's in the shadow of the Judas tree. How red the flowers are. They will grow purple. They will be fat and ugly. As he will be one day. He's very beautiful now. How can I make him go away? You reach out and pick a flower. You throw it to him and he will go away. All right. There. He has it. You see? And now he will never come back. Oh, yes, he will come back. He will follow you wherever you go. Perhaps he will write poems for you. But he will not speak to me? Oh, no. He will carry his message in his eyes. And I need not look in his eyes. I need not look in his eyes. Little Laura, I will die in this prison. I will die. I must get out. Help me to get out. What can I do, Henio? Nothing. Do you believe in the work you do? The useless teaching, the carrying messages, the keeping secrets that are not Please worth keeping? don't, Henio. No, you are betrayed. Life is not grand and high as you think it should be, is it, Laura? No, life is Brajoni who grows fatter while we die. Oh, I hate him. What? Hate this great revolutionary, this lover of the world? Well, hate him. Nothing will hurt him. He will never die of anything. No, he knows how to love the world to his profit. Henry, <coughs> why am I not like you? Well, you are not. You are no revolutionist. You are nothing. You are on the side of those who grow fat and say no. Eugenio, you could be a great leader. Uh, No, but a Joni is the leader. (laughs) 
A litter of hungry rats who clutch at his sleeves as he goes by. And I have seen him turn his face away because an empty stomach makes a foul breath. And with his face still turned, he tells them they are closer to him than his brothers. Farewell, brother and comrade, until tomorrow. But there is no tomorrow, my little Laura. There is never a tomorrow. Oh, if only I had men to follow me. These that I have, they are stupid. They are lazy. They would cut my throat for nothing. Oh, no, you are wrong, Bragioni. You are their leader. They look to you for all good things. Yes, I must give. Always give. Who gave to me? Let them starve as I did. Now I starve only for your love, my little Laura. You do not. <laughs> True, I do not. <laughs> when I was 15, I loved a girl and she laughed at me. I tried to drown myself. <laughs> but I have made a thousand women pay for that one. One is as good as another. I prefer them all. Except my wife, of course. Mm. Your wife is a good woman. Of course she's a good woman. Pure and virtuous. And no one is better at organizing unions of the cigarette girls. But she weeps. How she weeps. For you. For me. Because I am not there. So I give her time to weep. I have told her she will learn to weep only while I am not at home. Or I will leave her for good. How lucky his wife is. She knows what her wrongs are. And she is free to cry over them. You cannot cry, Laura. You can only wait for tomorrow. Hoping it does not come. Eugenio. Eugenio, what is the matter with you? Quietly. Quietly, my little Laura. Someone will hear you. Oh, there must be a doctor for the prison. I'll get him. No. Stay where you are. I was tired, little Laura. Very tired. The tablets. The wonderful tablets. You were kind to bring them, Laura. Now I shall be free. Eugenio, let me call the doctor. Eugenio, don't die. It does not matter, little Laura. It does not matter. Did you not hear me, Gringita? Well, no, I... I was thinking. What did you say? I asked if you would oil my pistols for me. Oh, yes. Of course I will. Give them to me. Load them, too. I will take the belt off. Not in my lap. The oil will ruin my dress. I will get you another. When are you planning on using the pistols? Who knows? But perhaps on May Day. Uh, from one end of town will come the procession of the Catholics for the festival of the Blessed Virgin. From the other end of town, the socialists will come. And when they meet, <laughs> then we may see something. Oh, yes. You work well with the pistols. You work well with everything. I think you must love some man who is working for the revolution. And that is why you work so hard for it, yes? No. You are not in love with anyone? No. And no one is in love with you? No one. Then it is your own fault. No woman need go begging. What is the matter with you? Nothing. Something, certainly. The legless beggar woman, the Alameda, has a perfectly faithful lover. Did you know that? I don't care. Well, soon. For now, it is enough that you work for the revolution. Mm -hmm. 
The day will come when this world shall be nothing from sea to sea but open trenches and crashing walls and broken bodies. Everything must be torn up. Everything that has rotted in its place for centuries, hurled up and cast down again, clean as the rain. Ah, and there shall be no one left alive, no one, but the truly benevolent anarchists who love their fellow men. Like you. Like me, of course. Remember to oil the shells also, little Laura. Yes, I am. Pistols are good. I love them. Cannon are even better. But in the end, I pin my faith to good dynamite. Yeah. Put your guns on. Mm. Go and kill somebody on May Day, and you'll be happier. <laughs> you are certainly right. Bragioni. Huh? Eugenio is dead. So? He took all the tablets I brought him, refused to let me call the doctor. He said he was tired. He is a fool, and we are well rid of him. I feel better. We will have some music. Eugenio is dead. He is dead because what he believed in is dead. Because you have protected yourself from life by siding with death. You have said no. No to everything. Little Laura, you are falling asleep. Oh, no. Laura, get up, Laura. Eugenio, what are you doing in this house? Take my hand. Please, take my hand. Come away, murderer. Murderer. Murderer, follow me. Hold my hand. Hold to the tree, to the Hudas tree. Take the branch. You see? It sets you softly on the earth. This is not my garden. This is the edge of a cliff. There are waves. Waves against my feet. Where are you taking me? To death. And it is a long way off. We must hurry. Take my hand. I will not go unless you take my hand. Then eat these flowers. Take and eat the flowers of the Huda's tree. They are warm. Warm with blood. Murder. This is my blood. My body and my blood. No. My body and my blood. You are tired, Gringita. Sleep well. I leave you now. I will return tomorrow night. From Hollywood, the NBC Theater is bringing you dramatizations of two short stories by Catherine Ann Porter. If you're interested in supplementing your enjoyment of these NBC theater productions with home study under college supervision, be sure to listen to the announcement at the close of this program. And now, our intermission commentator, Mr. Irwin Edmond. There are certain novelists, like the author of Pale Horse, Pale Rider, who are essentially poets, certain tellers of stories who seem almost as if they ought to be writing verse. And their prose does indeed have the cadence, the rhythm, the picture and overtone of imagination. What counts is not so much the bare bones of the plot as a flesh of meaning, or rather the living spirit that irradiates the flesh of meaning. Catherine Ann Porter is such a writer. She manages with a craftsmanship deceptively simple to tell us in a page not the mere surface identities of her characters, but what goes on in the processes of their hearts. 
In flowering Judas we feel within a page or two the worldliness behind the fat revolutionary, the tormented frustration behind the well-meaning, good-doing, inhibited American girl. We sent the tensions and overtones, sinister to a degree, behind the lush, tropical surface of life in the Mexican village. We sent the tragic shadows in the pagan sunlight. In Pale Horse, Pale Rider, Heartbreak is written down without sentimentalism, the sense of doom and of tenderness, and two young people thrown together in the sad confusions of the First World War, the fevered spreading terror of an influenza epidemic, the implicit sense of a world in which everything, including cliché wartime ideals, is meaningless. We feel the tragedy of a love found and almost ironically immediately lost at the hand of death by blindly smiting disease. We feel the sense of an emptiness confirmed by the fact of sudden, final loss following sudden, irretrievable love. All is told by suggestion, by nuance, like the overtones of music, like grace notes half heard, like the refrain of a song, so that death itself becomes the echo of a song remembered from childhood. Pale horse, pale rider. Fiction so written is more than a story. It is an incantation, a revelation, too, of depth within ourselves and other persons, so that such stories become delicate comment and appraisal of life and a musical evocation of its most subtly felt meanings. Thank you, Mr. Edmund. Our radio version of Catherine Ann Porter's Pale Horse, Pale Rider will be heard from Hollywood after a brief pause for station identification. shall I borrow for this journey I do not mean to take? I'll take Grayley. Grayley, because he's not afraid of bridges. Come now, Grayley, we must hurry. He is waiting. We must outrun him for he leans towards us with a blank stare that can bide its time. Run, Grayley, run. Take the rose hedge and now the ditch and down the lane and do not look at the stranger, Miranda. You do not need to look at him. You know how he rides... Easily, lightly, the reins loose in his hands, his black clothes elegant, his pale face with an evil smile. Oh, I've seen this fellow before. I know him if I could place him. You! You! I'm not going with you this time. Ride on! Ride on! I'm not going with you. I... Oh, wake up. Got to wake up. Oh, I was talking in my sleep again. I heard myself, but what was I saying? Oh, wake up, will you, Miranda? You're late, and Adam... Adam will be waiting. <laughs> Come on, lazy bones. Been parking these steps for a half hour. Oh, Adam, it's a wonderful day. I smell leaves burning. It's a wonderful day, all right. Miranda, my furlough's been extended. I don't have to go back to camp today after all. Isn't that luck? Adam. Oh, Adam, I'm so glad. Are you, Miranda? You going to walk me to work? Oh, what do you think? Come on. I imagine I'm late as usual. What time is it? Oh, about half past one, I think. Some hours you newspaper people keep. Well, is it half past one or isn't it? You've got your watch on. Well, sure, but I... But you don't like to look at it. Adam, you're blushing. I think wristwatches are very sensible. I hate anybody from Texas to see me. (laughs) (laughs) They keep telling us how all the regular army men wear them. It's the horrors of war. Are we downhearted? <laughs> I'll say we are. You look at in that new uniform. Oh, Miranda. <laughs> By what gorgeous luck did I happen to pick on your roomy house? 
How'd I know you were there? Mysterious powers. <laughs> <laughs> Will you be in the mood for dancing after work tonight? I'm always in the mood for dancing. You know, you look just like a shiny, healthy apple. Healthy is right, you know. I never had a pain in my life, I can remember. Oh, I've had too many to mention. Well, this work you do. Drama critic, eating and sleeping all the wrong hours, and besides, you smoke too much. You've been doing the same. The ten days you've known me, anyway. Well, yeah. what's it matter if you're going to war, anyway? Got time for coffee? I think so. Ah, let's go in here. All right. Want to sit at the counter? All right. Okay. Uh, two coffees, please. Adam, how did you happen to get a longer furlough? I don't know. They just gave it. Everybody's dying out there anyways, you know? This funny new disease, this influenza. It seems to be a plague, like yeah. in the Middle Ages. Did you ever see so many funerals? Mm -mm, never did. Well, anyways, I got four more days. Let's not have any grass growing under our feet, huh? How about tonight? Well, here's your coffee. Tonight's all right, but make it about half past one. <laughs> oh, what a job. <laughs> Nothing to do but run from one dizzy amusement to another and then write about it. Yes, too dizzy for words. Oh, this is hot. Huh? I wish I could have some cream. After this, I'm going to live on boiled cabbage and get in shape for the next round. No war is going to sneak up on me again. Well, don't you read the papers? Won't be any more wars. We're going to mop them up this time. So they tell me. Is that all you're going to have, just coffee? It's more than I want. I feel rotten. Oh, since when? You were all right yesterday. I don't know. I wish we were going to spend the afternoon on a park bench. A drive to the mountains. So do I. Adam, it's late. I've got to leave. Oh, all right. Look, take care of yourself, will you? Until tonight. All right. Until tonight. Adam, Adam. Adam, Adam. I want to climb mountains with you. I want to walk in fields with you. I want to live all my life with you. Adam, I want to love you. There's no time. Uh, you, Miss Forrester? Yes. Oh, are you wanting to see me? I'm from the Liberty Bond Committee. Look here, my girl. Do you know there's a war on or don't you? Oh, the war. Yeah, the war. We're having a war, Miss Forrester, and some people are buying Liberty Bonds. And others just don't seem to get around to it. Well, really, I haven't been able. You, you see, I, I have no extra money at all. Well, that's no excuse, girlie. With our American boys fighting and dying in Bellow Wood, anybody can raise $50. I have only $18 a week and not another cent in the world. Well, you can pay for it $5 a week. That's what a lot of people are doing. I can't afford it, I'm telling you. Now, we know it's hard, Miss Forrester, but everybody's got to do his share. Uh, now, Liberty Bond is the safest investment you can make. But I have no money to invest. Now think it over. You're the only one in this whole office hasn't come in. Well, next week, if, if I if I can. Yeah, see that you do. <laughs> I'll be back next week to see if you've made up your mind. Oh, why don't they take the filthy one? Fifty dollars. Five dollars a week. And then there's... Food and rent. <laughs> Miranda. Huh? Miranda, what am I going to do? Tony, for heaven's <laughs> sakes, what is it? Miranda, I can't do it. I'll never raise the money. I told him. Oh, the man from the committee. I can't. I can't. I told him, but he wouldn't listen. Now stop crying. Somebody will see you. I knew I wasn't the only person around here. I can't do it either. Miranda. Miranda, he told me I'd lose my job. I'm going to ask the boss. I just don't believe he'd do that. It's not up to him. They get after him. Do you think they can put us in jail? I don't know, Townie. I don't know what they can do. It seems they can do anything on account of the war. The war. The war. Don't think about it. Think about seeing Adam again. No, don't. The more times you see him, the fewer times you've got left. Don't think about it. Think about the times you've had. Miranda, look at this. Over here in this case. What is it? it says a fossilized tusk, approximate age 75,000 years. That's too long. Uh-uh. I like things take a long time to make. Things out of wood and stone. It doesn't seem like you. Huh? What else? 
Oh, boats and cars and... You know, you wouldn't believe how many miles I can get over in a car. Yes, I would. <laughs> and planes. I love planes. <laughs> oh, Miranda, if we just had my boat or my car, we could really have a good time. It's good enough for me the way it is. Well, I... I, I... Hey, how about some ice cream, huh? I'd love some. All right, then. Let's go. Adam, Adam, come out of your dream and listen to me. I have pains in my chest and my head and my heart. And they're real. I'm in pain. And you're in such danger I can't bear to think about it. And we've got to save each other. But we can't. We can't. Oh, this is so much fun. And they're always so sweet and so glad to get the candy and the magazines and everything. Brand, is my hat all right? I don't imagine they'll care. Well, what do you mean? These boys in the hospital are a lot nicer than the ones at the dances. Well, of course, I never spoke to any of them. I told the chaperones I'll dance with them, but I will not speak to them. Well, here's the ward. Here we go, girl. Miranda, what are we supposed to do? I never did any hospital visiting before. Well, just pick out a bed and start taking candy and things out of your basket, I guess. Poor things. I suppose it's hard on them having to stay in a hospital. Don't you suppose they're just crazy to get overseas and into the trenches? Yes, I suppose so. I think I'll talk this one over here with a bandage on his head. Well? I, well, I, we brought you some fruit and, and, and some magazines and candy and, well, here. No, thanks. But we brought them and, and they, well, they had to cheer you up. Not having uh, any, thank you. But, I uh, said I'm not having any, thank you. And would you please take your trash off my bed? No, I will not. Miranda? Miranda, wait for me. What's the matter, Sue? Have you left our grateful boys already? Let's go back out to the car. All right. You know, it's funny, but some of them wouldn't take anything at all. I don't like this, do you? I hate it. Of course, it's all right. I, I mean, we're doing our duty, aren't we? Yes, I suppose we're doing our duty. When you stay home from the war, there isn't anybody to talk to anymore. The Lusk Committee will get you if you don't watch out. Bread will win the war. Work will win the war. Peach pits will win the war. Keeping still and quiet will win the war. This is the beginning of the end of something. Something terrible is going to happen to me. Adam, I'm sorry to play so bad. I, I didn't <laughs> oh, promise anything. You know? It's all right. Only one more act. <laughs> Here goes the curtain. Oh, Lord, they're not even going to start. What's that fellow want? Can't you tell by the flag? Can't you tell by his waistline? My dear friends, I don't have to tell any of you of the terrible struggles and privations <laughs> our American boys are enduring. He looks like a penguin, don't he? They all do. That's what they choose them for. Boy, if that was all I had to do with myself. I... I ask every one of you in the name oh, my headache's enough as it is. Why won't he hush? He won't. I'll get you some aspirin. Why doesn't he say something about coal, oil, or iron, or international finance? What about them, you little liar? Adam, come on. We've got to get out of here. If they start singing, there's a long, long trail. I can't stand it. All right. Come on. Here. Here's your coat. Excuse us, please. All humanity, all history depends on you. Adam, I just couldn't sit there and listen. Just another nasty old man who'd like to see the young ones killed. Too old and too cowardly to go and fight. No, all I can do is send you. Oh, now, listen. What could the poor sap do if they did send him? What can you expect of him? Adam, worst of all, this is the way people look at you. Everyone's so afraid and suspicious. War does things to people's minds and hearts. Worse than what it does to their bodies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mind the hearts sometimes get another chance. If anything happens to the poor old human frame, it's just out of luck, that's all. Oh, yes. It's just out of luck, that's all. 
Well, anyways, if I didn't go, I... I couldn't look myself in the face. Come on, I want to go somewhere and dance. Where is the stranger? Where is the stranger on the horse? I remember him about the place, welcomed by my grandfather, my great aunt, my five times removed cousin, my old hound, and my silver kitten. Why did they take to him, I wonder? And where is he now? I saw him, passing the window. Miranda, you didn't get my note, did you? No. What note? I left it under the door. I had to go down to the camp all day for a lot of inoculation. Miranda, what is it? I, I don't know. I called your landlady, Miss Hobby. She said you was in bed and couldn't get to the phone. But did she tell you I called? No. She, she's afraid she'll catch something. Oh. And you've been all alone. I think there was a doctor here. He, he left a prescription and he said he'd come back, but he, he didn't. Where is it? A prescription? I don't know. He must have left it around somewhere. Oh, hey, on the table. I got it. Now, listen, I'll go out and get this. I have to look for an all-night drugstore. It's after one o'clock. You stay in bed. All right. And I'll be back soon as I can. Bye. Goodbye. I wish I were in the cold mountains, in the snow. Yes, there they are. Oh, but it's cold. It's cold. Another place. Now, this is better. Here's the jungle. Look at the birds, Miranda. Look at the leopard. And look at the monkeys. They're telling you something. What are they saying? You must hear what they're saying. War. 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 I tell you, they must come for her right now. I'll put her out on the side. Oh, I tell you, this is a place, and I've got a house full of people to think about. I know, but they'll come for it tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning? It's got to come now. Well, they can't get an ambulance. There aren't any beds. They can't find a doctor or a nurse. You stay out of the room, and I'll look after yes, her. Yes, you look after her. I can see that. Well, that's what I said, and you can keep out. Did you hear that? Most of it. It's nice, isn't it? What? What's all that? Hmm? Oh, your medicine, a lot of other things. Oh. You ought to begin with it this minute. She can't put you out. It's really as bad as that? Oh, it's as bad as anything can be. All the theaters, most of the shops are closed. There's nothing in the streets but funerals and ambulances. And not one for me. Give me a cigarette and open the windows and get away from me. I'm catching... Never mind. You know, take these two pills. All right. Not easy, oh, no, not... excuse me. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Go on, swallow them. All right. Adam. <coughs> Adam, I, Hold I it. think I'm going... As you were, lie uh, back. Now, just lie back and take deep breaths. You better give me a basin. Well, just a minute now. <laughs> Here. Let me wash your face with this cold rag. There. Now. Is that any better? A little less. Isn't the ambulance coming? Tomorrow, maybe. We might as well dig in. All right. Let's talk. Let's tell each other what we meant to do. <laughs> you tell me first. I want to know about you. Well, there's nothing to tell. If it ends now. Because all the time I was getting ready for something that was going to happen later. When the time came. So now there's nothing to tell. Well, haven't you been happy? I don't know. I never thought about it. You talk. Oh? Oh, I was going to be an electrical engineer. I guess I'll finish up when I get back. Adam, don't you love being alive? Yeah. I... Don't you love weather and different colors and automobile horns and the smell of food cooking? Yeah, but you, you, you better rest now. I don't want to. I've got to keep from going to sleep. I'm afraid if I go to sleep, I won't wake up. Do you remember any prayers? Do you know Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Bless the bed I lie upon. I should die before I wake up, pray the Lord, Miss. That don't sound right, does it? No. Adam, I can't see. Oh, no. All of a sudden, I can't see. 
Where are you? Don't, don't, kid. Up, take it easy. Try, try to take it easy. There. Better now? Yes. Wish we could sing. I used to know an old spiritual. It began, pale horse, pale rider, done taking my lover away. Do you know that song? Yeah, I used to. Hear it around the oil fields. I used to hear it around the cotton fields. It, it's a good song. I can't remember the next line. Pale horse, pale rider. Yeah. We ought to have a banjo. There's a lot more to it than that. About, about 40 verses. Rider done take away, mammy, pappy, brother, sister, whole family. But not the singer. Death leaves one singer to mourn. Can't hold on. No. You got to, darling. You got to. You're gonna be all Adam. right. Adam. Adam, I love you, and I was hoping you'd say that you love me too. Oh, what do you think I've been trying to tell you all this time? Adam, I love you, Adam. Oh, darling, now listen. You're gonna be all right. You go to sleep now. I'm going out and get us some more ice cream. I'll be back in five minutes, my darling. Go to sleep. 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 Don't go away, Adam. I want to hold your hand. Oh, I can hear voices. Like flying arrows. Oh, Adam, look out. The arrows. No, no, don't be hit. It's my turn. Why must you always be the one to die? Make them stop shouting. Everything is shouting. Adam! Adam! Why, you're perfectly all right, aren't you? Oh, yes, of course. How did you get here? I'm from the county hospital. There's an ambulance outside for you. Why, how very nice. I'll just get up and... It's all right. I've got you. You must excuse me. My legs are a little... Perfectly all right. We'll put this blanket around you and I'll just carry you. But where is Adam? Adam? Yes, Adam. He was here and now he's gone. Oh, uh, he'll be back. Don't you worry about Adam. He's the least of your troubles. Will he know where to find me? We'll leave him a note. Come on now, it's time we get out of here. Up you go. I feel very badly... I don't know why. I'll bet you do. What's your name? Dr. Hildesheim. Well, Dr. Hildesheim, aren't we in a pretty mess? We certainly are. Hang on now and we'll go. 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 I wonder where I am. White shadows, white walls, and people dancing. Why is everybody dancing? Oh, no, you mustn't do that. You must leave that old man alone. He's dead, you know. He's dead, and I can hear him. Crying. 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 Please, I want to see Dr. Hildesheim. It's important. I want to see Dr. Hildesheim. I'm right here. Dr. Hildesheim, I want to ask you about Adam. Oh, that young man? He's been here and left you a note and he's gone again. But he'll be back tomorrow. I don't believe you. Uh, Miss Tanner? Yes, doctor? Have you got that note? Here it is. Take it, my dear. I can't see it. Here, I'll read it. It says, They came and took you while I was away. And now they will not let me see you. Maybe tomorrow they will. With my love, Adam. Now, you see? Oh. Oh, I, I don't understand. Read it again. What does it say? Oh, that'll do. Uh, Miss Tanner, where is that bed? There is no bed yet, Doctor. Well, we'll manage something. 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 Yes, I see him. I see him coming. 
a German helmet, and his face is a skull. But why is he here in my father's pasture? This is our old well. It used to be dry, but there's water in it now. He's poisoned it. I saw him. He's poisoned the water. Hildesheim is a Bosch. He's a spy. Kill him, kill him, kill him before he kills you. Kill Hildesheim. Kill him. No, kill just, him. just lie quietly. Uh, oh, I, I didn't mean it, Dr. Hildesheim. I, I never believed it. Don't remember it, please. Please don't remember. Here now, I, try to swallow this. Hold on. Don't touch me, please. It's all right, dear. It isn't. Your, your hands are like white spiders. Don't touch me. Shut your eyes. Oh, no. Then I see worse things. Shut your eyes. 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 Look. There it is. And there's nothing to be afraid of. I won't feel anything or remember anything. I only have to consent. He's deaf, and he's nothing to fear. Look, Miranda, don't be afraid. It's nothing at all. Death is only death. Oh, but what is that light? How beautiful. How beautiful it is here. There's something missing. I've lost something. I've left something behind. What can it be? There are no trees here. I've left something. Where are the dead? We've forgotten the dead. Where are the dead? Oh, I must go back. I must go back. But where? Oh, oh, stop. Stop. It hurts me. Stop. I think that'll do the trick, Miss Tanner. Will you fill another hypodermic, please? What is it? What's happening? They're celebrating. It's the armistice. The war is over, my dear. Celebrating. Yes, I hear that. The war is over. Open the window. Open the window, please. I smell death in here. There is no light in here. I will never see light again. Not as it was by the shore of that wonderful blue sea. Oh, it was beautiful there. And now I'm back. And I can't get away. They've brought you back and set you safely again on the road that leads to death. They will all be telling you how good it is to be alive. They will say they are glad you are living. What can you answer to that? Well, Miranda, you've had a tussle, haven't you, dear? Yes, Tony, I suppose I have. But you made it. And that's all that matters, isn't it? Yes. Everybody down at the office can't wait to see you. Do you know that the boss is called here every day? Did they tell you that? Oh, and there's a new sports editor, very handsome, and he's heard all about you. Miranda, you just have to hurry up and get back as soon as you can. Why, yes, Tony. Yes, of course. I'll be back in no time at all. This is almost over. Why, my dear, look at all these letters piled up. You haven't read them yet? Let me see that one. Oh, no, no, take them as they come. Take the top one first. No, let me see that one. Dear Miss Forrester, I am sorry to tell you that your friend Adam Barclay died today of influenza in the camp hospital. He had asked me in case anything happened to be sure to let you know. Please accept my sincere sympathy with all best wishes. Now, you must be careful of yourself and not overdo. 
And you should come back now and then and let us look at you, because the after effects are sometimes... Yes, Miss Tanner. Tony, Tony, do you suppose I could have my old room back again? I don't know why not. We stored all your things with Miss Hobby. I'm going now and start collecting things. I'm going to cross back now. I'll be at home again. I must go now. I must begin saying goodbye to Miss Tanner and Dr. Hildesheim. Adam. Adam. Now, you need not die again. But still, I wish you were here. I wish you'd come back. Adam, do you think I came back to be deceived like this? Adam, I love you. Let me call you back. Let me see you, and I'll say I believe. Adam, let me see you once more. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's not the way. I must never do that again. Your taxi's waiting, Miranda. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. You have been listening to Pale Horse, Pale Rider, and... In Flowering Judas, Alma Lawton was Lupe, Lillian Bayef, Laura, Nestor Paiva was Bragione, Donald Morrison was Pedro, Jack Crucian, Francisco, Don Diamond, Eugenio, Marlene Ames, and Michael Chapin were the children. In Pale Horse, Pale Rider, Georgia Ellis was Miranda, Larry Dobkin was Adam, Ellen Andrews, Tony, and Margaret Brayton, Tanner. Your announcer, Don Stanley. The director of the NBC Theater is Andrew C. Love. This program came to you from Hollywood. What's on NBC today? Well, there's both comedy and mystery for you when you set your dial to NBC on Sunday. For laughs galore, listen to Phil Harris and Alice Fay, And then stay tuned for the adventures of Sam Spade, tops in the mystery field. You'll hear entertainment, and you'll agree the best radio listening on NBC. You're tuned for the stars 
on NBC.